So just to give you guys a quick update on what's going on with uh, Florence. Florence has uh, kind of been all over the place lately as far as what's going to happen with it. Um, what we do know right now is that we are still on the direct path of Florence once it comes inland. Um, we are at, uh, we're 160 miles from Cape Fear. I mean, there's probably some other places along the coast that might be a little closer to us. The wind, the tropical storm force winds are actually going out on the storm 175 miles. So uh, even when it's at uh, full strength going into the shoreline, uh, we'll see tropical storm force winds. But then once the hurricane gets into shore, they're expecting that to drop uh, fairly quickly. The big issue that we're facing now um, is there will be power outages because of the wind. I mean, it's kind of inevitable. Um, it probably not destructive winds as far as houses are concerned in our area. I say probably because nobody really knows. But um, what we do know is that the hurricane is planning to be kind of slowing down <laughs> as it comes inland. So once it starts, we're actually not going to see sunshine again until next Thursday, a week after it arrives. Uh, it'll be pretty much raining and thunderstorms. Um, so that that's a problem. Um, that's a lot of rain. And uh, we actually have a thunderstorm coming in right now. Whoa. <laughs> Not yet, or so they say. Something's brewing. <laughs> do you think this is bad? Yeah. Yeah, you do? <laughs> you just wait till Thursday afternoon, little buddy. Our uh, generator is full of water. <sighs> How do we fix that? Run. When it stops raining? Yeah. Yeah, we can prepare for a hurricane, right? Uh -huh. When the thunderstorms stop, we can go prepare for a hurricane? Yeah. Yeah. We gotta wait till the thunderstorms stop. Wow. That was God saying he's well pleased with you, buddy. That was called thunder. Wow. We've had thunderstorms almost every day. Uh, this month, so that all combined together is a lot of flooding potential. Um, the Anasama Ranch is on a hill, so again, I'm, I'm not concerned that much about the flooding, but I don't really know what to expect as far as the roads around our house. So, assuming that we're not going to have any power 
and assuming that we are not going to be able to go uh, very easily into town for a little while. Um, we've started our prepping today mainly with trying to get some of the essentials. We were a little late to the game, um, so when we went to go find water, there really wasn't any water. Um, so I started cleaning out some containers so that we can pull some well water uh, and store it. I'm not a big fan of storing well water for a long period of time, um, but we can use that water first. It will last us for a couple days, and then we can um, move on to our bottled water if we need to. Because of the floods, groundwater can become contaminated in a situation like this. So what we have to be careful of is the quality of the water coming out and whether or not it's drinkable uh, for the, the several days following this, uh, this flooding effect. So um, again, we're on a hill, but our well goes much deeper than that. So, uh, you know, groundwater, whether you're up on a hill or you're down in a valley, it's, it's not good either way after a flood. There is a benefit to being on a hill, and that is that if your well itself does not flood over the top, um, there's less chance of contam contamination that way. Um, so we worked on water, we worked on lighting. I found some old candles from our wedding in the barn. So these are some old candles that we had left over from our wedding. Um, we used to have tons of these, but they've been left out in the barn, so some of them have melted or they've gotten saturated with water and will no longer work. Some of them, the glass is broken. So I tried to mix, miss and match some of these to get some candles that look like they were in decent shape and uh, some containers to put them in. The nice thing about these is they're a safe container and the candle can burn for quite a while. And so if we spread these out throughout areas of our house, we should have some lighting that we wouldn't otherwise have. Um, but I do need to wash these before we take them inside. So these are going to be added to my washing pile. Um, make them nice and pretty again, and then do something about those candles. I haven't decided how I'm gonna clean those yet. So we're going to be cleaning those up and preparing those so that we can have them throughout the house and have uh, lighting in the evenings and then, of course, um, gasoline. I was able to find a gas station that had gasoline. It took quite a good bit of time just to get the gasoline today. I was hoping I would be able to get some gasoline and then get back in time to test our generator and make sure that's running correctly. I still have a full day to do that. I, I still have a lot of work to do tomorrow. Um, I did get our four-wheeler operable. Uh, that's going to be a useful tool for us. Um, especially since right after, as soon as we're able to, we're gonna have to go back out into the pastures and check on our animals. Um, and then we also picked up some two-way radios. Uh, two-way radios, um, decent ones, have the National Weather Service channel on them. And once we lose power, um, assuming that we have bad cell phone reception anyway, if the cell phone tower in our area uh, loses power or goes out, we're, we're kind of in the dark as far as what this storm is doing, how quickly it's moving, and when it's going to be over. So we picked up some two-way radios with the weather channel on them, and we will be um, using those to kind of track the storm, and then it will also give us a method of communication if uh, self-service is spotty for a little while afterwards. We got a little bit of prepping done today. I'm not pleased with how much I was able to get done. 
Um, it's hot as the dickens outside, and uh, it, you know, it hasn't really been that hot all summer, and then it's hot in September. Uh, I don't get it, but anyway, so it's pretty hot outside, and I've had to do a lot of digging through our barn because we were in Colorado and other places for most of August, our property is like overgrown. So every time I go anywhere to look for anything, I have to weed through grass that is up to my chest, um, which is also not fun, but I did it. Um, I think now things will be a little easier when it comes to prepping tomorrow. Um, so I'll keep you guys informed. Again, you know, with this hurricane, we're not on the coast. We're about 150 miles inland. So I'm really kind of hoping that we don't see the things that are, uh, the coast is going to see. We did have some family out there who has come inland um, and they're staying nearby. So that makes us happy. And uh, now tomorrow is going to be focused around preparing animals, uh, getting the generator functional, and then protecting uh, vehicles and things from falling trees or debris, and then just kind of you know hatching down. I think we've got plenty of food um, it, as long as we can keep our refrigerator going, and we do have um, things that don't require refrigeration. So. All together, I think we're gonna be fine through this little fiasco. Um, but it certainly does have everybody pretty excited. Um, I think it's important to remember that um, we're all protected in these situations. And if we turn our minds in the right direction, you don't have to see the turmoil of the storm, but rather the beauty of it as it unfolds. Um, I know that's, that's hard to say sometimes, but uh, there's always a higher place you can turn to regardless of where you are in some of these what seem like natural disasters. So um, keep your thoughts elevated if you're in North Carolina, especially if you are to the southeast of us. And... Uh, Yeah, I'm sure everybody's going to be absolutely fine. Use wisdom and be safe out there.